I'm Eric Newton, and this is The Together Show. We all know relationships take work, but what is that work, and how do we do it? As a former divorce lawyer, I've watched thousands of couples break up firsthand. Having seen the worst in relationships, I decided to try to help couples stay together. So on this show, we talk to real couples and find out what love really looks like. And it all depends on what person you're talking about, because what I expect from Shane is different than what I would expect from my brother or his sister or, you know, it's it's about the relationship you have with that person. If you really know that person, you have to evaluate what expectation you put on them. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for listening. Today's episode is about optimizing behavior for happiness in marriage. Shane and Jessica, today's guests, have a solidly, what I would call, traditional American marriage. They live in a lovely home in the suburbs of Sacramento. They've got two adorable kids and two very cute cats. They're friends with all their neighbors. They spend their weekends with family, and life is good. But Shane gets occasionally grumpy and dark, and Jessica needs a strong sense of control in life to feel completely at ease. In her words, she's a bit bossy. But they're both working on these tendencies in themselves, and it's for the sake of their family, and that's what makes their story so touching. Now, this was a long interview because these two are a lot of fun to talk with. So to save time, I'm cutting out the first part of the interview in which Shane explains what happens during his dark and grumpy moods. So in a nutshell, he's prone to raise his voice and to curse when he's frustrated, and that doesn't work for Jessica. So what he's doing instead is that he's attending therapy to manage the anger, And he's also decided that rather than expressing the anger in front of his kids, it's best to go into a room that he's built for himself in the attic and work it out until he's calm. Now, I want to emphasize that Shane's expressions of anger are very normal. This is not a story of abuse or extreme anger. Rather, this is a story about optimizing for happiness. And this is what both of these two are doing in their lives. So we're joining the conversation just as Jessica is talking about her own challenges. So with that, Let's go to our interview with Shane and Jessica. His anger or his frustration or his grumpy mood or whatever it might be, even though I don't want to be like this, I feel like I have to do something about it. (laughs) And then when I can't fix it, then it's like, you know, that's when I get aggravated with it. It's like, you know, why can't I do something about it? Why can't I fix this? So. Do you... you it's, it's interesting exhausting. That you put it that way. It's interesting that it, it's interesting that it, for you it's a, it's your responsibility to fix it. Yeah, I'm curious about that. Have you ever given that any thought? Where that comes from? No, I'm. I mean, I think it's just how I am. I'm a Type A. I'm a planner. I want everything a certain way, and I think it's just part of who I am. I just. I don't want, you know, anyone to be unhappy with me. I don't want to displease anyone or, you know, hurt anyone's feelings or anything like that. And it's just a constant, I mean, it's, I feel like it's a good thing to, to be that way. But at the same time, it's exhausting because I'm constantly worried about like, is he happy? You know, um, just you know, simple things like making plans for a group of people. We struggle with this because how do you please everyone in the group when you're the one making the decision? And it seems so silly to say it out loud, but those kinds of things really stress me out. Yeah. And they exhaust me trying to... And nobody's telling me I have to do this. It's just part of who I am. I feel like I, I have to make sure every single person in the group or whoever's involved... Is happy with what's going on. Yeah. So when he's not happy at home, why isn't he happy? Why, you know, we need to change plans. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I, I need to do something about it. I, and so that, that's really how it affects me the most that I know he's like that, but when I can't redirect him or, you know, flip it around, then it affects me because it's almost like I failed him. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? Yeah. Totally. Making. Okay. You're yeah. making so much sense. It's, it's, it's actually just, hard it's... to process how I think about things. <laughs> so I don't know if it, I'm explaining it correctly, but 
Well, it's really fascinating. I what I'm wondering as you're talking about it is if you can imagine a way where you don't have to be exhausted. Can you imagine a way of being where you still get what you want, which is kind of the structure and people being, you know, relatively content around you without being exhausted? Is there like, because I, I can tell you like the structure, but you don't like the exhaustion. There's so there's right. something that doesn't line up, you know? Right. That's been our struggle. And probably the last especially the last two or three years, we've really been trying to find that answer. Yeah. How can she still go with her nature of planning and pleasing and doing that, but without the frustration and the exhaustion? I'm and feeling the, overwhelmed by it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can even sense it in you a mm-hmm. little bit when you're talking about it. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. That's it, I find, like how she says, her, she feels like her job is to help me or to make me better. I feel like my job is often to do the same from my my side when it comes to those those issues. When we're planning group events or or like a, a day at the to the a weekend to the beach or something like that, and she's getting frustrated that somebody might not like this hotel or they don't want to go eat at this place or do this thing, and I, you know, and we're constantly I'm, I'm trying to be a reality check and just. Well, you know what? If everybody but that one person likes doing that, they don't have to do it. Yeah. And that's okay. You know, just kind of doing that. Which is the okay. rational answer. It's okay if they're upset. And I can come to that rational conclusion, but to get myself to actually feel it and believe it yeah. is a whole other yeah. is a whole other issue. And so how do I get to a place where I know that, you know, if I make these plans and I include these people and they go along with it, then they really have no room to complain. Yeah. Right. Because they went along with it. <laughs> and right. I can think Great that, rational thinking. you know, so. And we do almost always give them an opportunity. This right. is what we're thinking. What do you guys think? But right. it sounds fine to me. So yeah, if, you, like- if you don't speak up in that moment, then you really can't complain later that you didn't want to do that. Right. But that and rational. And I can answer- know that is, is what I should be thinking and feeling, but to actually get myself to that point where I actually believe it, in my soul, yeah. that I'm okay with it. Yeah. I rarely get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally, totally get it. Okay. Do, well, a, look, answer me this. Do you remember a time in your life when this wasn't present? No. Even when you were little? Um, I don't know if it was so much the need to please everyone and make sure everyone was happy and you know not upset with me. I don't know, because I've always been very bossy. I've always kind of like... (laughs) That's different, though. That's different, right? It is. It is different, but it's... It's almost like this need to be in charge, but I don't want to be in charge because then someone might not be happy with what I've decided. Yeah. Does that make sense? (laughs) Oh, totally. So, I've always had the need to be in charge. I've always kind of been a leader in a sense. Um because if if the need to be in charge happened first and then the resentment about it happened later, that means something happened in in that gap of time Somewhere that's probably there. pretty noteworthy. And I can't. Nothing comes. Did, but well, nothing pops out as this is why I'm like this. Yeah, of course. You know I, what mean, I mean, like it's. You can never think about it in the first <laughs> blush. But, and actually, but, you're the first, that's really, first person that's really asked me. Made you think in about that, it. In that <laughs> way, you know, it's like, um, I don't know. So Well, but but is that at least the case that the, the, the and I'm just using your words because I don't want to characterize it in an, un, in an unfair way, but the bossiness, did that, was that ever separated from the exhaustion about the bossiness or in your memory were they always the same? Um, I think as a child, I just didn't recognize. Yeah. I wasn't mature enough as a child or even as a teenager to to put that responsibility on myself. What happened that made you realize that you should put the responsibility on yourself? What matured you? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. This was all pre-me. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, hmm, I wonder what the answer is. <laughs> I do think um, some of your need to please everybody is uh, learned behavior. Your mom's a lot like that. My mom is, I'm exactly, exactly like, like my like mom. That, yeah. mm. 
Mm-hmm. Exactly and even like and mom. even kind of needing to run the show. Yeah. She's not as assertive about it as you are. Yeah. But as far as, yeah, she definitely likes to make sure everybody's happy. And it really upsets her mom if, if any of us aren't And everything has time, to be fair. Which took her mom a long time to learn to deal with me. Yeah. <laughs> Because I would look, I would look unhappy, and I'm I'm not. I just that's I'm sitting there. With yeah, no she's expression. always so worried about Shane, and she's like, <laughs> "What's wrong with him?" You know, I'm like, "Oh, mom, he's fine. Don't talk to him." You know, like he's just. She's had to tell me he's you, grumpy. You need to smile a little more when we're at my mom's house because she thinks you're not enjoying yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that's exhausting too. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yes, my mom is. I'm. I am exactly like my mom in many, many ways. Yeah. And she, I know she feels the same way. You know, she's always making sure that we're all happy and that everything's fair. And, you know, she she wants the best for everyone. And she, you know, just to the, I think to the point, and she's, I don't think she's ever told me, but I'm sure it's exhausting for her too. Yeah. My dad is very much laid back and just go with the flow. <laughs> and, a lot like me, which is a dynamic yeah. that comes together a lot of times. Yeah. So, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm like my dad in my, um, you know, more of my type A kind of yeah. everything has to have its place. And yeah. I want things cleaned a specific way. And, you know, I want things done a certain way. There's a right way to do everything. Yeah. And I and got that from, from my dad. dad. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm very much like my mom and... <laughs> In personality, she's a little more hyper than me. But, <laughs> but well, yeah. I, so I, I, you know, I don't know, I don't know where that all that responsibility came down. I don't know at what point it started affecting me what, what in a, that way. What a lot of therapists, like early um, childhood therapists, will say is that there's for every child, there's a moment when. Well, there's several moments where they have these cascading realizations that they're not, you know, that the world isn't perfect, that their parents aren't perfect, that everything isn't safe. All those different realizations mm-hmm. that we have as we grow. <clears throat> and that arguably they're, they're somewhat traumatic. And that we all develop these ways of behaving that make us safe in the face of that threat. And, um, and yours is a classic one, right? That's just one of the really common ways that people go about the world. And... But if it's exhausting, a lot of times you can go back and you know, do some work and pinpoint what that childhood memory was where suddenly you realized the world was dangerous or suddenly you realized you needed to take care of the people around you because X bad thing was going to happen. And, when, and just realizing that moment a lot of times gives freedom because you, cause it's, like the, cause it's this realization, oh, I was eight and there's, there's little kids who were having a fight with each other and one of them got hit with a leaf and you know <laughs> and i made up this whole lifetime of behavior based on an eight-year-old's fears and oh of course i can let that go so sometimes just noticing it mm-hmm. makes a huge difference by the way i've seen that happen <laughs> um, and it's really fun so if you ever get the chance to explore it, let me know. I would. I you'll I'm, have me back on. Yes, I, I would. In a in a heartbeat, I am fascinated by those moments. I think that they're the coolest thing of the human experience. You know. Um. Now there's another classic. Uh, what's the word? Um, outcome, I guess, mm-hmm. of that behavioral archetype the one where you need to take care of people around you and control the world. I don't know if the controlling the world, is that right? Is that fair to say? I don't know if I'm making that up. Um, I want to control my world. Your world. Not necessarily everybody else's, but my world. But I do want to take care of everybody else. And I want everyone to be happy. Okay. Or at least content. So there's another (laughs) thing you often hear about people who want to make everyone around them happy. Tell me if you feel this one at all. Which is that if they don't reciprocate and make you happy if they don't go to the effort that you go to for them if they don't go to that same effort for you then the resentment even doubles um definitely i have felt that um it's one of the things we've actually been kind of working on in our relationship (laughs) is that um we've kind of come to terms with the 
fact that you can't expect others to do the same thing that you would do mm. or react the same way you would react yeah. or um, basically we've been talking together about changing our expectations of people. Yeah. And we've talked to some family, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, some family members about it and just having expectations of people you will constantly be let down. Having inaccurate expectations of people. Yes. Or maybe... Or glorified I'm, I'm, expectations. I'm missing a, I'm missing a word. I'm <laughs> trying to could, find it. I'm trying to find it. Because um, you could expect somebody to... Unrealistic expectations yeah. of people. Yeah. And it all depends on what person you're talking about. Because what I expect right. from Shane is different than what I would expect from my brother or his sister or you know it's it's about the relationship you have with that person the personality of that person and just you if you really know that person you have to evaluate what expectation you put on them because if it's unrealistic or unattainable or mm -hmm. out of their norm i guess is for lack of a better word then you're going to be disappointed or you're going to be let down. And it's not fair to them either anyway. It's not fair to put it on them. Yeah. And it's not fair for me to f constantly feel let down by it. Right. <laughs> you know, so because that adds to, you know, the whole exhausted and overwhelmed yeah. by everything that's going on. And so we've been working on that. We've been talking about specific people and what we expect from them, how we interact with those people, you know, just what it reevaluating the relationships beyond the two of us and how they affect our marriage. You know, it's, Oh, that's so sweet. That's such a great, <laughs> that's so great. It's, it's hard to not let other people affect your marriage. Yeah, because we've, we've, how I interpret situations or comments someone might make or, yeah. you know, things that happen, he may not see it that way. And I'm really bothered by it. And he's like, oh, well, I didn't even realize that bothered you. Or, or, you know, yeah. I didn't take it that way or something, you know. Yeah. So, but again, it goes back to communication. And we just, I feel like if we talk it out, we can, we can kind of come to terms with things, not necessarily agree or right. be on the same page, but we can respect each other's perception of things. I, I really like how you, the frame that I put around what you're saying is that it's, it's as if you are checking in with the other to find out what you need to do to make them feel okay or complete in the marriage or safe or that they can trust you, all of those things that are so important to marriage. So you're basically, it's like you're saying, what do you need? Okay, I'm going to give it to you. Mm -hmm. And then what do I need? Okay, can you give that to me? And I, I really <clears throat> love that. That's really great. Um, I, it's, 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 I mean, that's such a vital way to keep a marriage thriving. The part about it that always creates intimacy for me is understanding why I need the thing. Yeah. You know, because that's like, that's the other half. The The intimacy with, with my partner always is that. Right. You know, getting what I need from her, but then also sharing with her why I need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think it helps the other person fulfill that need too. Yeah. Just fully understanding why. You, it's not just an arbitrary need or want. It's, there's, there's reasoning behind it. And it helps the other person not only know how to fill that need, but also understand why they need to fill that need and why it goes back and forth. It's this, and I think it is, it's constantly cycles all the way around too. Yeah. But yeah, understanding why is, is definitely important. And it also, cause we talk about like the anger thing. Um, we talk about why that bothered her or why it was difficult for the household. Yeah. And it helped me understand why I need to work on it or get it in check or, and it helped me understand her better and her perspective and her view on our household. Today's episode is sponsored by Little Bird, the independent diamond and engagement ring experts. If you're getting married, the truth is that your engagement ring is likely to be one of the more expensive purchases that you ever make. And it's a tough one to make. How do you choose? Where do you go for reliable information about diamonds? Do you even want a diamond? And how do you keep from getting ripped off? 
Now, you can probably get up to speed on all of these issues by yourself because there is an immense amount of information on the internet. But that takes time, and time is valuable. And that's where Little Bird comes in. I vetted Danielle, the owner, myself, and I can tell you that not only is she good people, she really knows her stuff. Little Bird takes you through a process that helps you to find a ring that matches your personality and has lasting impact. They charge a flat fee for their services, and the odds are you're going to save more on the ring by working with them than they charge in the first place. So give Little Bird a call for a free consult. There's no harm, and you're going to learn a ton. And you can find their website at littlebirdtoldyou.com. And remember, the best way to buy an engagement ring is with a bird's eye view. So Shane started going to therapy, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Are you still going? Um, I've taken a break. Just My schedule got all messed up, but I will be returning for sure. And is that what happens in therapy, that you're exploring the underlying (laughs) mechanisms, the whys of, of just general feelings and behavior not yet this is a fairly new i've only been a few times um so far it's more been trying to reprogram my knee-jerk reactions the things the things that cause me to get to those angry places or to those dark depressed places to try and shift that at the at the start so that's really what we're doing right now you guys gotta listen to this one episode on, on the show that mm-hmm. I recorded back in the early days. I think it was episode seven or eight. And uh, it's a two-part interview with a couple, and they talk about anger mm-hmm. and how they express anger in their relationship. They also talk about polyamory. And you guys can just ignore the polyamory part <laughs> and um, listen to the anger part. And their theory, I, I, I'm going to nutshell it for the sake of this conversation, sure. but I really want you guys to listen to it. And then if you would, I want to have a call with you and see yeah. what you thought about it. Yeah. Okay. But to nutshell it, the idea is um, the wife in that relationship has a whole huge capacity for anger. Just unbelievably the biggest capacity mm-hmm. I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. She can allow it around her and not feel unsafe. <laughs> and... um. Her theory is that anger needs to be fully expressed and um, that if it's not fully expressed, it gets bottled up. Now, the method of expression, of course, has to be safe, right? but it has to be fully expressed or else it's going to morph into something else. Mm. And, and she has some really deep theories about how to do it, right? like how to express anger. And she's learned how to express her own anger. It all stemmed from uh, when she was in New York City on 9-11 and mm. was three or four blocks away and oh, watched wow. the trade centers come down and just yeah. changed her forever. Um, so I nutshelled it. What do you think of that theory in general? The first thing that came to mind when you were saying it was... Anger needs to be expressed. How did you put it? Um, I think I said fully. fully. Yeah, something like that. So, to me, just how I process that statement is, if you're expressing it fully, then it needs to come out in its natural form. Mm. And if it's not coming out in its natural form, for instance, if something you know makes him mad and he wants to cuss and kick the stool... You know, he's letting it out, but it's unhealthy for the people around him being me and my children. Yeah, yeah. So, how do you, how do you really express it fully and well, not express it the way it wants to come out? Yeah, legit question. I mean, it's got to be a, it's got to be a change in, I yeah, don't if, even know. I mean, it's got to be to either out, a right. chemical change or a, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, because to me, when you say fully expressed it should come out in its natural form and that's not always healthy or safe i think she she also wrote a follow-up article and i think she said something along the lines of um i think she basically said if you blast it out at your partner unconsciously it's going to do damage Mm -hmm. that will just that that won't produce any purpose it won't produce any value so there she does have techniques for managing it in the moment. Basically, like 
just holding it back, you know, holding the dam back, and then going to wherever your safe place, safe place yeah. that yeah. you do things, you know, <clears> like, uh, I don't remember what her examples were, but I knew somebody who had a bunch of plates from a garage sale in a, <laughs> like a garage and would go in there and just like smash plates, you know, <laughs> or uh, I think maybe uh, Kate goes in the backyard and just yells, ah! whatever. I don't know. It contains it until it's not going to hurt the person that needs to right. not be hurt. And then boom. What do you think of that? I think to each his own. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as long as it's a healthy, safe That sounds place, a lot like what we I said mean, earlier where I have to leave the room. Because he's mm-hmm. gone upstairs mm-hmm. and yelled and... Punched the pillow. And yeah, whatever he does up there. <laughs> he stomps around a lot and... <laughs> You know, whatever he does. I mean, that, but that's fine with me because he's separating himself. He's at least acknowledging, I need to let this out. I need to walk away so I can find the safe place. Yeah. And then, you know, what he does up there, unless he's breaking my stuff, then I'll be mad. But, you know, I mean, whatever he needs to do, as long as he's in that safe place, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Okay. I feel like it's, it's a dealing with anger has got to come from both sides, though. I think you need to feel, when the anger is present, you do need to let it out somehow. You need to let it out safely. Bottling, it's obviously the wrong answer. But I think you also need to address where the anger is coming from, the root of it. When you're, when you're not angry. Well, when you're not angry, why am I getting angry so easy? Like we talked about earlier, the why is equally important. I think they're both equally important. I, think, I don't think it's safe for somebody to be angry all the time or on a regular basis and going off to the safe place on a regular basis. Right. There's something wrong. I think there's you're angering there's a reason you're angering so easy and that might need to be addressed as well so i think there's two sides to it yeah yeah i I agree because there's got to be some element of coping because if you jump to that need to express in that certain uh, you know or or healing outburst way right like it's you've got to be able to deal with things that come up in life without exploding yeah, right. on, on everything. So there needs to be that that healthy balance right. of, you know, is this really important? Do I really need to get this angry? Or is this something, yeah, I should definitely be angry about. I'm going to go upstairs and beat the pillow now. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's finding that balance, I think, is important um, with that. But can I ask Shane a question? <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah. He's saying so, please. <laughs> do you think that because I know you've struggled with this your whole life. Mm-hmm. Do you think that that's changed since we had children? What? Do you think that... Which part? Like like you said, how you have to figure out kind of why, why are you getting so angry? Um, because I know, I mean... I know we're both in agreement that parenting is hard. <laughs> I mean, this is probably the hardest thing yeah, we've ever done. Absolutely. And... It's exhausting. I mean, we're tired all the time. You rarely get a full night's sleep. You're yeah. dealing with things that we didn't have to deal with before we had kids. There's two little lives dependent on you, mm-hmm. you know, for their everything, it, it, especially at their ages. And when you're so full of all of the parenting stuff. Yeah you're consumed by that. So there's not a lot of room left. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like you have so much going on and so much to do and to remember and little emotions to, you know, just nurture and just it's exhausting in itself. And then you have no room, you have no room left to cope. Right. Or, you know, at least that's how I feel. So, It's easy to get angry because you do have such a short yeah. fuse, I guess. Yeah. Is that the right word? Is it? Is it a different kind of? It's become the why has become or, well. Rooting out the why has become more important. I don't know if it's changed, but it's become more of a um, priority. Mostly because I don't want them to pick up the behavior. If it's genetic or if it's chemical or you know those things, I can't help that. But if they're picking up on my behaviors, which they do, obviously, um, my son says, damn it, regularly now. <laughs> but 
you know, it's become a more of a priority because it became more of a priority when we got married um, because I didn't want it to affect you and even more so now that we have children. Um, and it's something that I'm more, I'm more actively aware of. So do you think it got better or because you have that to remind you or is it worse because you don't have room left for it's become, irritating or angry things? It's or? hard to say. It's, it's more obvious. Um, I'm more aware of it, but I don't know. It's, there is also more pressure as well. And you're and and the added stress of being there's the normal stresses of being a parent and dealing with day-to-day parenting stuff. Um, so then there's, there's a lot of times where I, I don't know if it's, that or if it's my depression or you know it's hard to discern sometimes if it's both or you know so i don't know better it definitely i'm definitely more consciously aware so i would say better in that sense that on a day-to-day basis i'm checking myself and my anger am, am i mad the reason i'm mad is it valid and is my expression of that anger healthy that's usually that's they make it's you a two accountable. point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, let me ask you the same question. Does it do you? Well, it's not the same question, but what do you think? Has it changed for me or for him? For him, has well, has your experience of him changed since the kids? Yes, but not necessarily negatively, just more, you know, reasons to get angry are different, I think, now mm-hmm. or. Reason, things that trigger that anger mm-hmm. may be different now just because, you know, kids are a game changer. Yeah. You know, they change everything. So it's sounding like I'm a really angry person. <laughs> I know we've really focused on this <laughs> anger thing. That's going to be the, the, frankly, that can be the problem with the podcast. Cause I get curious about a thing Yeah, and I dive down the rabbit hole. It's just funny. Cause I think overbalance. any of our friends listening will be like, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> completely shocked. Them. But that's also the benefit, right? Yeah. The podcast Shane, behind the scenes. Because it's like because you then you just get to be transparent. Like, you know, we're a couple. Yeah. And we're real people. We're real people. <laughs> and this is the uh, you know, could have been any one of twenty things. This is the one yeah. for yeah. us. Um well, but let me ask actually the second question you asked him though, about your your the thing you were talking about, the wanting everybody to be okay and then being mm-hmm. exhausted by it and sometimes needing to control the environment. Has that changed since you've had kids? Absolutely. Which in which direction? It's put it more on me because uh, now I have two little lives that are dependent on me. Oh, so right. I have to make sure that every aspect of mm-hmm. everything that's going on is I mean, Shane can tell you like I'm telling him what to put in her lunch. <laughs> yeah. Because last night she told me she wanted a cheddar cheese. And by golly, you better make sure that that cheddar cheese is in her lunch, right? You're saying that like you're annoyed by it. Oh, it's a, it, exhausting. I keep using the word exhausting because... That is, I, yes, that's I mean, the right just, word. Yeah, it's interesting. And I'm aware of it. So, yeah, you're aware of it. You know, I, I'm still trying to find that way to not let it affect me negatively. More, You know, use it for the positive. And I... Not to focus on the negative like we focus on his anger, but it, <laughs> oh, it's, it's your turn. <laughs> I mean, it can be a good thing. It can be a bad thing. Yeah, you know. I, I have this theory about those the one the double edged sword personality yeah. sk- trait behavior slash skills. My my theory is that, like we were saying before, the trauma of some kind in childhood causes this behavior to be created, and then we have this whole life where we've built up this skill, but the skill is in reaction to a fear real or perceived. Mm. And, and as long as the human being, I, my theory is as long as we're in reaction mode, we are, we're never really free, you know, we're, we're, and it's exhausting because you're always like, you're fighting this unconscious perceived fear that you don't even probably know what it is anymore. And, and then now you've got two kids and you've got to protect them before it was just you, but now you've got to protect three of you and then him too. And oh my God, but when the thing that I keep seeing is when people distinguish where it comes from, then the skill set that was created to compensate for that fear is now a choice. And, mm. oh, I can structure things to the t- 
tiniest detail if I want to, but I don't have to. Right. And then when it becomes a choice, <laughs> and for me, right? for me, it's a conscious decision has to be made yeah. to be okay with something if it's not perfectly the way I want it. It's just to or, force yourself to decide. Yeah. yeah. So it's not a choice right now. It's it's, it's reaction. Well, and and there are times where I can decide. It's a rare choice. It's a rare choice. Yeah. That like the other night, my mom thought I was being silly, but I was being serious and. She said something about I can't remember what was happening and Bodhi right. Bodhi was doing something. He's three years old, so he was doing something. I'm sure he wasn't <laughs> supposed to. And she said something about well, you know, what Bodhi was doing, and I said, And this is me not caring. <laughs> and and I was it sounded sarcastic, but I I had made the decision that night that I was gonna have a good night. He's and not getting under my skin. I'm yeah. not gonna let it bother me. I can't do that all the time. Okay, so let me ask this. Shot so it in the doesn't dark. defeat me all the time. <laughs> now, okay, yeah, of course not. And with work, I have to do the same thing because there's a role at work that only a few of us do. And it can be very easily overwhelming. Yeah. And it's nonstop and it's like whatever you don't get done is waiting on you the next day. And Well, of course a person like you would have a job like that. Right. It's <laughs> taken me, I've been in this role for six years been doing that specific role for about f- well nearly six I guess is when I started learning the the specific role and it was just a couple months ago that I and I can tell you I I have gotten past it I had to decide that I was not going to let this neg- negatively affect me anymore because for six years it stressed me out good for you And I just decided, and I've stuck to it, that I can only do what I can do. I can only do the best job that I can do. And that's all I can do. So everything else will just have to wait. You know, it's... Let me just tell you, as a former employer at a law firm with a whole bunch of paralegals, who all insisted that the thing was going to come down around our ears if they didn't stay there until midnight. Yes. Um, every time we always found that the institution ran better if they would go home mm-hmm. at six o'clock like mm-hmm. they were supposed to and forget about us mm-hmm. right. until the next day and please take your vacations and go away on weekends. Recharge. You need to recharge. Because yeah. mm-hmm. if you don't, you're ragged the whole time. As an aside, I'm glad you realized that. <laughs> Well, okay, here's... here's I'm sorry, my, I derailed there. No, that, I mean, I think you illustrated the point really well, because of course a person like you with that mindset would have a job like that and get into a role like that, because it just fits perfectly, right? It's just yeah, this perfectly thing. aligned <laughs> thing. <laughs> Duh. That is my thing. <laughs> um, and it's a great skill set. I mean, it's also why we would hire people like that. But there was always that balance, you know? And you need the skill, but it's so much better if it's a choice. And it's that balance where... You're working hard and doing the best you can do, but if you're letting it negatively affect you all the time, yeah. then you're not actually doing the best job you can do. Yeah, right. And exactly. so in my family life as well, I mean, some of the times it overwhelms me and exhausts me, but some of the times I'm able to get past it and have a good night. Yeah. yeah. Despite all the things that might not be perfectly in order or perfectly the way I would set them in my ideal world. It's interesting the ratio you just articulated, though. I mean, you didn't say the numbers, but it sounded like (laughs) most of the time I'm overwhelmed and exhausted, and sometimes I can be happy. And I just want to propose... That's probably how I feel, honestly, if we're being raw about it. You know, I mean... (laughs) Which is probably normal, given the age of your kids. Yeah. Um, But... I do want to propose that it's probably possible to have the ratio be the opposite. Right? It's when, possible. Wouldn't you think it's yeah. possible? Baby steps. <laughs> not very probable. <laughs> <laughs> Her face is not likely. <laughs> okay, let me... This it's is, like a pick your battle situation, though. I think it's, do I want to fight this today or do I not? The this is... Is what? This is the, do I want everything perfect in my way? And how I think it should be. Yeah. Or do I just want to relax? 
Yeah. Do I just want to be content in... Well, but if your unconscious brain has it that you're just not safe, unless things are that way, then you're not going to be able to fight that for very long or And how very do you often. change that? You know, like yeah. the, you root the it exam- out. You root out the story. The example is, you know, when you have kids and life happens... And everyone's like, oh, you know, and enjoy, you know, what you have and what's going on. You can clean the house tomorrow. But my personality and the way I am, I'm not comfortable and truly at peace if my house is a mess. Yeah. So how do you how do you be okay with something you're not okay with? <laughs> like, it's it's I'm well, still f- trying to figure it out. And okay. You pick your battles. Well. Yeah, I mean, I think on the surface where these battles are being played out right now, you're probably not going to have a whole lot of success not fighting them. Yeah. I, I've, I'm, you know, I think probably right now the way things are set up, you're going to have to do the dishes and whatever, or whatever, the, you know, you're mm-hmm. going to have to control the picnic. Um, right? Yeah. But, mm-hmm. but, uh, but, and you may always want to control the picnic. Mm-hmm. But there's a difference. There's a difference between having to control the picnic because the world isn't safe, which is what deep down your body is saying, and being like, you know, what? it's going to be better if I control the picnic. Everybody's going to be happier. I'm just going to do it, and I want to do it. Like those are different. Those are different. And yeah. the one, the first one, is what feels like you're being driven in front of a, you know, team of horses by a whip. And the other one is where you're the one on the carriage deciding whether, you know, it's just a marked experiential difference between the same behavior if it's coming from a different place. And I mean, it just seems to me that that's how you have it, that the world's not safe unless you're controlling it. And that that's, it's not true. (laughs) <laughs> and I know it's not true. Right? But you you know that rationally, yeah. and we all know that right. sitting around here, but your deep gut body, mm-hmm. unconscious mind doesn't know it. Mm-hmm. And that's the art. Like, that's the art of, well, it's, that's what happens in therapy. That's the art of self-inquiry, spiritual development. I think it's finding these unconscious mechanisms and bringing them to the light and looking at them and saying, oh, <laughs> oh, that's where that came from. Okay, okay. I guess, huh, maybe I can let that down for a minute. All right, you guys, I appreciate this. is great. This is really good. I appreciate it. That That's fun. where we're ending our interview with Shane and Jessica, folks. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to hear the first part of the conversation in which Shane talks about his anger, uh, we're posting that for Patreon subscribers. You can find that at patreon.com slash together. And if you'd like to learn more about Shane, you can find his website, which is his podcast production company at noisy snail studios. Dot com, and I'll put a link to that in our show notes. They have some great shows, and you should definitely check out what they've got on offer. If you liked what you heard on our show today, please subscribe to us on iTunes or Stitcher or Podbean or whichever podcatcher you happen to use. It makes a big difference for us and for our ratings. We really appreciate it, so thank you. If you have any questions or comments or if you'd like to be on the show, please reach out via one of our platforms. We love to hear from people. Our website is www.together.guide. Our Facebook page is facebook.com slash together show. Twitter and Instagram are both at together underscore show, or you can email me at host at together.guide. That's all for today, folks. See you next week.